In this video, I'd like to show you a few really special plants, and they're flowering right now, middle of May in Zone 5. Get ready for some eye candy. I bought this plant and I wasn't sure how well it would grow in my conditions, so I've left it in the pot. And each winter I sink it in the ground so the soil is up to the rim and I just leave it like that. I didn't want to disturb the roots. But it's been doing really well over the last two to three years. Last year I took a number of cuttings and they rooted quite easily. So I now have another plant in the garden and one that was given to a friend of mine. Here, let me show you what it looks like in a raised rock garden. It's a huge flower compared to the leaves and the plant. The plant itself is only about a half inch high and the flowers are almost an inch across and it's this beautiful, beautiful blue. If you have a rock garden, you really have to source this plant and get one. And I'm finding it pretty easy to grow. I'm going to try to collect some seed from it this year and I'm going to take some more cuttings. I want this plant all over the place. This is a little species daffodil. It's called Narcissus bulbocodium. I planted the seeds in 2016, it's now 2021, and I've got three plants in here, three different bulbs. Growing bulbs from seed is a slow process, and they generally take three to five years to start flowering. This one did flower last year, but this year it's putting on a really good show. A couple of these are finished now, and I'm hoping they make seed. A couple more are coming along. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep it well watered because I want the leaves to grow as long as possible to make strong bulbs. When the leaves die back, I'll dig up the bulbs and put it in my raised rock garden. It's time to come out of a pot. But when I grow bulbs, particularly smaller plants from seed, I like to keep them in pots for several years. That way I can track them. So this does have a name and I also put a stick in. And the stick tells me that there's something actually in the pot. Because by July and August, these will have died back and I can't see anything. And I never know whether this pot is empty and had a plant in it that died, or it actually have something good. So these sticks tell me that this is a good bulb, even if I can't see anything in the pot. This is going to make a great addition to my rock garden. Here's another pot of my seedlings. These are Trillium grandiflorum. And they've been grown for a number of years, and this is the first year that they're flowering. You'll notice the flowers are actually quite small for this species, but the plants themselves are pretty small too. They'll flower now, and as they're finished, I'll actually pinch them off, because I don't want these to make seeds. I want all the energy of this plant going into bigger root systems. I'll probably keep them in a pot for another year or so, and then I'll put them out in the woods. But they're coming along really nicely. While we're looking at seedlings, have a look at this one. This is a primula called Primula puessence. It turns out that primules are really easy to grow from seed. They're tiny, tiny seed, but they germinate easily and I always get lots of plants. This is an acaulee type, so it likes to be in part shade, a good amount of moisture, and I should have this plant in the garden for a long time. I generally keep them in pots until they flower, and then I look at the flower and evaluate whether I want to keep this one. And I don't have very many yellows in this species. So this one's going into the garden. Too bad for my friends, they can't have it. I have one last plant to show you today. This is one of my absolute favorites. It's a clematis called Alpina. It's a small clematis that blooms very early. Remember, it's the middle of May here in zone five, and it's in full flower. This is a type one clematis. It's really important not to prune it in the spring. If you do, you cut all these flowers off. So let it grow during the summer, leave all the growth, and it's gonna look pretty ugly and woody during the winter, but just leave it on there. And then in spring, it starts to grow, makes new leaves, and then the flower buds come almost right after the leaves. It's a fantastic plant, and I grow it in a planter. It's been in this planter now for about four years, and it blooms like this every year except last year. And what happened last year is a rabbit found it, and he must have climbed up on the pot and he ate all around the bottom of the plant. Didn't kill it, but in effect he pruned it for me. So what I did last year was I put chicken wire around this whole container to make sure he can't get at the plant. And now I'm rewarded with this great flower. If you have a rabid problem in the garden, 
you either need to protect your type 1 clematis or an easier solution is don't grow them, grow type 3s. I grow a lot of clematis towards the end of the property there in my arbor and that's where a lot of the rabbits hang out and they prune those every winter. That's okay because it saves me doing it in the spring. But if I had type 1 clematis back there, I'd never get any flowers or I have to protect it. And I do have one back there which I protect with chicken wire. Otherwise the rabbits would get all the buds on me. Anyways, clematis alpina. Consider adding it to your garden.